I 3D printed an e-bike for less than $100. And it was kind of an accident. You see, this might look like a bicycle that uses a drone motor to be one of the lightest and cheapest electric bike conversions you could do. But it's actually something a lot more important than just an electric bike. If you have been following the channel at all, you already know I'm making a 3D printer that can self-replicate and help me take over the world. To do that, the printer has to be able to print its own motors. Which it technically already can. But to be able to continue this development, I need to be able to compare different designs and determine which one is the best. And for that, I need to make a dyno. A device that is able to measure how fast the motor can rotate and the torque it can deliver. So, knowing what I set out to do, how did I end up on an e-bike? Well, let me tell you. The dyno I made uses this infrared sensor to measure the rotational speed of the motor. To measure the torque, I mounted the motor on a rotating axle, and I constrained the rotation of it with a lever that is resting on a kitchen scale. But wait, the kitchen scale is not even connected to the output shaft of the motor. How does that even work? Well, you have probably experienced this when your drill suddenly decides to become a helicopter when it bites into the material. That is because every force has an equal and opposite reaction. Even if that force is at the end of a lever. Because of this principle, we can simply measure that force and use it together with the known length of the lever arm to calculate the torque of the motor. And there we go, we have everything we need to measure the power of a motor. Except, when we spin up this motor on the test stand, it doesn't really measure any torque. Technically, that is correct. Because we don't have a load on the motor. What we usually want from a dyno is a graph like this, showing the maximum torque a motor is able to provide at any given RPM. So when we spin up the motor like this without a load, then we are just running along the x-axis of the graph. If we want to know the torque a given motor is able to provide, we just give it all the beans and then slowly add a load until the RPMs drop to zero. However, doing it this way is quite imprecise and very painful, so we need to find another way. At first, I wanted to connect the motor to a pump and regulate the load by adjusting the pressure. But finding a suitable pump within my budget turned out to be a challenge. But where can I find a device that is intended to reduce the rotational speed of a thing in a controllable manner? I think I have a good idea. Since all the sensors are mounted on the static side of the dyno, it really doesn't matter how we add load to the motor. We could just flip the bike upside down, directly attach the motor to the wheel without worrying about it spinning at three times the speed of sound, before we then use the bike's brakes to slowly increase the load on the motor until it stalls out. Except, I know for a fact there is one subscriber that would be very disappointed that the dyno does not work as an e-bike as well. So for that reason, I decided to design the system in a way that would allow me to use it as a dyno, but also as an e-bike that would have enough torque to pull me along. These tiny motors can supply around 100 watts of power, which should be enough to reach around 15 kilometers an hour. But the problem is that the power is being delivered at 10,000 RPM, while we need the bike wheel to spin at around 100. So, if this 10-tooth pinion would be your input gear, then the output gear would need a thousand teeth and be the size of a giraffe. Now, reasonable people would get around the problem by making a multi-stage transmission and just live with a slightly less efficient gearbox. While less reasonable people would not eat tomatoes and end up driving their bikes with a super inefficient, non-back drivable worm gear? Look, tomatoes are disgusting, okay? And worm gears, underrated. Look at it. So cute. Anyway, I really wanted a single stage reduction system. So let me show you the three things I did to make this happen. First off, who said we need 10 teeth on our pinion? If we halt the number of teeth to five, we can reduce the size of the output gear to half as well, thereby making it, well, you know, the size of half a giraffe. Which is significantly closer to what we want. So why don't we just reduce the number of teeth to like, you know, two or three? Well, the less teeth you have, the more problems you're gonna run into with vibrations and engagement. But this brings us to our second trick up our sleeves. Because we are 3D printing the gears, we can make helical gears with very steep angles. This allows us to make pinions where the next gear tooth engages before the previous one has let go. Thereby, we can greatly reduce the vibration and engagement issues on a low tooth count pinion. 
Just look at this two tooth pinion. It shouldn't work, but it does. With this, we are able to reduce the size of the output gear to something that is no longer reasonable to be measured in giraffes. I mean, it's technically a bit too big for the bike. But I can solve that by simply time traveling into the future, grabbing one of my dyno sheets and showing you that one of these tiny motors has a peak torque of no more than 0.25 newton meters. That means this tooth profile is way too strong, even if it's just made out of plastic. By reducing it to a more reasonable module, we can now easily fit around 300 teeth on something the size of a bike wheel. Which allows us an incredibly elegant solution where the wheel of the bike does double duty of both being the wheel, but also the gear. This reduces the parts required and makes installing the kit super easy. Well, super easy if you have a 3D printer. But if not, don't worry. Today's video sponsor has you covered. PCB way, your one-stop shop for everything manufactured. Regardless if it's a simple plastic pinion or a high-precision titanium gearbox, PCBWay has a wide variety of 3D printers and CNC machines that can produce the parts you need in just a couple of days. And, as you can tell by their name, they also make PCBs and they can assemble them too. That's a service I will definitely have to use whenever this budget 20 amp RC airplane ESC gives up the ghost and I will finally have to make my own. So, what are you waiting for? Go check out the link in the video description and find out how PCBWay can help you with your projects today. And thank you PCBWay for sponsoring the video. So, we have a functional break a measuring setup that I refined and hooked up to an Arduino, and three different motors that need to be tested to determine which one would work best for an electric bike. So, it's testing time. The first motor is from an old RC plane, and I don't even know the brand of it. But, looking at the no-load RPM, we can calculate that it's a 1200 kV motor. After hitting the 10 amp power limit of the power supply, we can see that this motor created around 0.08 newton meters of torque at around 10,000 RPM. The second motor has a very similar shape and size, but it's rated at a lower KV. As such, the no-load RPMs are also lower, but we can see that it managed to create even more torque, 0.1 Nm. The last motor is a pancake motor, and it has the lowest KV of the lot, plus a very different shape. We can see that it spins a lot slower than the other two, but it also has the most torque, twice as much as the runner-up with 0.2 newton meters. Oh, well, at least we got a lot of results before the pinion broke. Running all the motors with the same 12 volt 10 amps of power, the low KV pancake motor makes the most torque. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I have a copy. So that's it. Just get the lowest KV motor you can find and call it a day, right? Well, not entirely. You see, it's not just about torque. This bookshelf is holding the books up with an estimated 15 newton meters. That's a hundred times more than our motors. So then, why are no e-bikes, or even EVs for that matter, not powered by bookshelves? Well, bookshelves do not rotate. If you want to know the power of your motor, you have to multiply the torque with the RPM. In case of the bookshelf, you get zero, meaning it doesn't have any power, because it's a bookshelf. And if we want to do the same with our motors, we get a graph like this. For now, don't worry too much about what all of this means. We'll have a closer look at it in an upcoming video where I will be designing and 3D printing my own motor on my homemade metal 3D printer. So don't forget to subscribe. So on to the e-bike. When I made this dyno sheet, I used a power supply with a limited current of 10 amps. Battery does not have that functionality. This cheap speed controller will just give the motor all the current it can push through it. Meaning, if we let the battery and the speed controller do its thing, we will likely see a dyno curve like this, except it would probably look more like this, and the room would be filled with the smell of burned electronics. By using the motor with the highest torque relative to its power, we can give ourselves the best chances of not overloading the system, even though this comes at the cost of reducing the maximum power to probably no more than 75 watts. Anyway, I removed some of the parts of the dyno to make the bike a bit more compact. And I ended up with this. An e-bike conversion that takes only 3 minutes, costs less than $100, weighs less than a kilo, and can pull me along at a reasonable pace for about an hour. And you can build one too. I will release all my designs for free, so you can recreate it or modify it in any way you want. Now, during this project, I ran into quite a few interesting challenges, so I will make a video talking about some of them. 
and also address any questions you might have. This video I'll upload to all my Patreons, without whom I would not be able to do these videos. So thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you all for watching, thank you to all my Patreons, and thank you PCBWay for sponsoring the video. I'm Sunshine, bye. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.